okay, right now where you are. Maybe what you have been going through in life, it's, it's, it's been bad, it's been diabolical. What you have experienced is bad. See, I was listening to a story, the story of uh, this uh, Zimbabwean lady who came to, 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 to England. Things were bad. She had written a suicide note. She was an illegal immigrant in this country. Things were bad. She had three kids back in Africa. The husband had left her with the three children. That's a fight. Then. What do you do? Now here in this country, as an illegal immigrant, she could not work. Things were bad. So every person that it ever helped it, you know, was, you know, speaking words of condemnation towards it. You know, she was treated like a trash. You know, you were like a garbage bin. They were saying negative words everywhere where she went was negativity, negativity, negativity. They were reminding her of how bad she was. Maybe that is your story. Things might be bad, right? But what's that? God had a plan in the purpose for, for her. Despite what she was going through, despite the challenge. Listen, this is the woman who, who she sat down, penned her suicide notes. There was no hope. There was nothing in her life. More like Naomi. She had become Mara. And then a call came. The call came. Sister Tandu, glory to God. Hi, thank you so much. Then the call came. When that call came, the call was come and work. They went through everything, every CV. They went through all the CVs. She had this industrial experience of using machinery and she put it in a CV. It looked irrelevant for the job that she was applying for. But the recruiter went through all the CVs. They had requested somebody who had knowledge in this industrial sewing machine. And she happened to be the person that had the knowledge. They called her. Remember, she has a suicide note. She has no job. She is in a foreign land. Every person where she comes from, they are saying negative things concerning it. How do you fight? How do you rise up? Listen, yours might not be the same. Yours might be challenges in marriages, challenges with the children, challenges with the parents. You, you know, you might have grown up in a hostile environment. They say, Pastor, I hear you. you are talking about fighting for the family. You know, you don't understand what I am going through. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You and your household shall be saved. When the call came, the woman took the call. She said, ah, let me take the call after all. You know, already in your mind, she wants to kill herself. She takes the call. As she takes the call, it was a call to come to work and work. You know, she tells them everything. I'm an illegal immigrant. How can you even call me for work? She says, don't worry. Just come to work. She goes to work. As she goes to work there, there is the manager who is a Christian, who knows God, right? She hears from God. Listen, today's message is about the sent ones. Do you see people that are sent to you? Glory to God. Hallelujah. That can help you to find. If you are the sent one, can you hear the cry of people wherever you are? You see, it's easy to do church. See, Paul and Silas were in a prison. In that prison, God had in his omniscient mind the jailer. The jailer was heading for, for, for hell. Right. But Paul and Silas in a, a place of turmoil, in a place of pain. These were not the prisons that we have in England where they, they, they give a five course meals. So that was a bad prison. But yet they were sent in prison for a reason, for a purpose. Sometimes your pain that you are going through is for somebody else. You know, it's not for you. The cross was not for Jesus. The cross was for us, but Jesus said to go through the cross, believe in the Lord Jesus so that you'll be saved. See, we have to come out of our, our self. What 
When I come to the house of God, what I want, what I need, it's all about me, myself and I. You know, I have to hear the cry of the Father in heaven. I have to hear and feel the heartbeat of God so that I can communicate with those that are hating, that are out there. But if it is about me, I cannot hear what somebody else is going through. Can you hear what somebody else is going through that you can be the saint one glory to god that despite your pain despite your challenge you know sometimes when you 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 have gone through challenges you have gone through pain just like naomi it's hard to even be sent to ruth you cannot help ruth because you have gone through pain if you have gone through your own barrenness like elizabeth you've been looking for a baby you've been looking for a child now you believe you are pregnant but that baby is not kicking on the inside of you it's hard for you to be sent to a mary because you have allowed your pain to define who you are glory to god i want to talk to you i want to talk to the saint ones and those that Ascend to them, right? I, I, I want to, to, to minister to you that you see, if you allow your pain to cloud your judgment, your pain can end up making you irrelevant to the people that God wants you to help. But if you allow your pain, glory to God, you're crushing that Father, whatever I am going through in life, I want you to use it so that I can be a blessing to somebody else. You will be a blessing to somebody else. Now, she goes, the manager who is sent to him, the Lord begins to speak to him. There is that woman, she has never been loved in her life. She's never had anything. She has always been rejected. She's always been condemned. She's always gone through. I want you to love her. I want you to love her. See, I want you to love her with my love. You see, God begins to give this manager love to this woman who's about to commit suicide. She was asked to go and wait for three days. And she had made up her mind that after I finish this, I commit suicide, right? She, she starts making her coffee. She starts loving it. She starts doing everything. You see, the Lord speaking to the manager says, this woman is dangerous. She has suicidal ideation. She's about to kill herself. She can hear that frequency. Imagine if the manager could not hear at that frequency. What could have happened? What could have happened? You see, as God's children, as God's ambassadors, we are ambassadors of God here on earth, right? Right? We are called to fight for families. See, this series really, it should be about us ironing each other so that we can go back to the marketplace and begin to bring change. So, pity what is happening, that we now have to come to church to, 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 to be geared up, to, you know, to be prompt up so that we can rise up. You know, a church should be a place where, as, as believers, you know, we are just going there to, to be, you know, to, 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 to encourage one another. Iron sharpening iron. That is it. As I'm there, you know, I'm there to worship God. I'm there to praise God. I'm there to lift him up. I'm there to give him praise. But as I'm here, you equip me so that I can go and equip those that are hating. The jailers, those that are in prison, those that are in hospital hospital, those that have suicide and ideation. Yes, my family might be messed up. Yes, I might be going through trials. I might be going through tribulation. But I know that the plans that he has for me, it is plans to bring me out of this. As I come to the house of God, I'm not coming to looking to come out of this. I'm coming to the house of God to worship him, to glorify him so that he can equip me. Then I can be sent to somebody who needs him. You see, there are trials in life. There are trials in life. We as believers, when we come to the house of God, we are not coming to try and escape from trials. No, we are coming to be equipped that if we come out, <laughs> glory to God. I love, I love the story of <laughs> Meshach Shadrach and Abednego says, listen, if you deliver us, that is good. If you don't deliver us, we don't care. Glory to God. We have already made up our mind. We are not bowing to this stage. We are not bowing to the trials that we are going through. We are not bowing to this thing. If you deliver us, Nico, we, 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 we don't mind being delivered. That would be great. That would be awesome. But if you don't deliver us, we will not bow down to this thing. You see, if we, we are to be the sent ones, there is a way how we relate with God, even in a prison. Can we praise him in a prison? That's what Paul and Silas did. 
in the midnight hour, they praised him. They glorified him. You see, in that prison, there was a jailer. And God wanted the jailer and his family to be saved. You know, as much as these days, churches don't talk about heaven and hell. It's a reality. When people die, two places, heaven and hell. And we as God's children, we are the conduit. We are the channel. We can cause them to change their status quo, to change where they are going, right? We can change, we can cause, we can be destiny changers if we understand what Christianity is all about. That is not about Pastor Lord getting what he needs. It's not about Sister so and so getting what he needs. It's about me being equipped so that I can go and equip others. It's about me having that mind of Christ as the Holy Spirit begins to work through me that I can see somebody going through pain. Can you see somebody going through pain? Even in ministry. Sometimes we get carried away with ministry. We want to minister. You know, the revelation is flowing. Pastor's revelation is flowing. So as the revelation is flowing, and then you no longer hear what people are going through. You no longer hear what people are going through. The manager heard what that woman was going through. Suicidal ideation. She wanted to kill herself. And then she called it to the office says, I hear you want to kill yourself. The Lord has told me, says how? You see, because the Holy Spirit, that's what the Holy Spirit does. He will take that which is of the Father. He will make it known to you. It ceases to be a religion. Then you become potent in what God has called you to do. You can hear the cries of your neighbor when there is no milk. Then God can send you. You see, then there is a change. Then there is a there is a change. Then there is a, a transformation. See, that transformation now can, 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 can be seen. Glory to God. I'm using this gadget for the first time after a long time. So it's it's it's, it's, it's a bit all over the place, glory to God. You see, then you can hear the cries, the cries of people. See, that's what, you see, the jailer had a knife wanting to commit suicide. But Paul heard the cry of the jailer. What are you hearing? Glory to God. So when we are fighting for the family, as I say, God wants our families to be saved. But why don't you be the one that is Naomi, that is sent to help somebody fight for the family? Why can't you be the one that can bring changes Glory to God. And Father, today, as I come out of this, this series of fighting for the family, I've heard, Pastor, I've heard them share, I've heard everything that has been shared about everything, mindset, wrong mindset, victim mindset. Thank you, Jesus. But today, I want to be the one that hears you. Then you can send me to people that want to kill themselves. Oh, oh, oh in the middle of the night, right? You, you see, sometimes we don't hear God. Because you see, when I'm caught up with the, what I need from God, you see, because we are living in a time where we are caught up, especially in ministry, we are caught up with what we want. We, even ministers, you are caught up with wanting to grow the church. You are caught up with your vision. You are caught up with what you want. You are caught up with your business. You are hearing that there is an entrepreneurship meeting there. You are caught up about leadership. You are caught up about this and that, that you are no longer caught up with people that are hating. See, we have to come out of that. If you were there in intercession, that's what I was trying to talk about. You want to come out from your own ideologies of who God is. You see, we are burying people that we should not be burying because we are sleeping. We cannot hear. People die, right? Because we can't hear, we cannot be sent to him. You see, that's what God is trying to get us into. I say during intercession, we are at a tipping point. It's either we tip to God and say, Father, here we are. Mold us, change us, help us to be the usable vessels that you have sent us to be, to be the catalyst of change. Catalyst of change. See, if you are sent, you are a catalyst of change in any environment. Things don't just happen. Things don't just happen. You see, but when we are caught up, let me tell you something about being caught up. You know, I was at work some time back. You know, I'd not been there for a long time. There's this uh, hematology nest that, uh, you know, I'd not seen for a long time. There was a gentleman who was going for, for dialysis. He's going for dialysis. As I go there, I see this hematology nest. I want to talk to him. So as I'm talking to him, I, I, I'm talking to him. I'm caught up talking to him. Do you know what we were talking about? Football. He's a Liverpool fan. So we were talking about Liverpool fan. Now, there is this gentleman. He's going for dialysis. The spirit of the Lord says, Lord, go talk to him about me. You see, I said, Lord, I will 
to talk to him when he comes out of dialysis. Out, he's not, I've not seen this person for a long time. See, the spirit spoke. The man went for dialysis. When he came for dialysis, he was intubated. Intubated meaning, you know, he could not breathe on his own. They brought him to the ward to die. The time was not there anymore to talk to this guy. He died on my watch. So I know what I'm talking about. How to sometimes get caught up with something. Got caught up because I have not talked to my friend for a long time. I'm caught up in that conversation. So if I could get caught up in that conversation, I can also be caught up of what I'm believing God for. There is nothing wrong with believing God for anything. Glory to God. God has called us to be believers. Glory to Jesus. But he wants us to be caught up with his heart, his heartbeat. Glory to God. So that we can win people that are going through challenges. Can we be caught up? With his heartbeat. When you are, when you have the heartbeat of the Father, the heartbeat of God, when he says, Go and speak to this person about me, you drop everything that you are doing. It becomes an urgent assignment. But when we are caught up, with, even with the religion, you can be caught up with the religion. You can be caught up with the religious way. You can be caught up with anything that you are doing that you become irrelevant to fighting for somebody else's family. Paul and Silas, they could have been beaten. They could have been bitter in, in prison. After all, this jailer, he put us here. But no, they knew their agenda. They knew their purpose in life. What's your purpose in life? What's my purpose in life? The manager sat down with her, gave it to him, said, listen, I perceive the spirit of the Lord is saying, you want to kill yourself. You want to kill yourself. He said, don't do this. They employed him. The manager, to, she had no way to leave. You know, if you are an illegal immigrant, it's bad in this country. No way to leave, nothing to eat back in Zimbabwe, where she came from. You know, mails, letters were coming, you know, letters of abuse. No one ever saw, from a, a very young age, no one ever saw anything good. She was raised up by a grandmother. The grandmother who used to take her to church, the grandmother who used to fight for her, she had died. Oh, she had nobody. Imagine your own parents had forsaken you. Maybe you are here. You never heard on all the parents or fathers and mothers and everything else. And you're saying, oh, you know, my life will never make it. Maybe you are here. You are going through challenges. You are looking at somebody else's marriage. They are happy. They are there. And you're saying, Lord, why me? I'm alone. I'm lonely. Things are bad. Things are not bad. Glory to God. God is for you. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Glory to God. Do not give up. Do not change your name to Mara. God has not called you to be Mara. You are still sweetness. God has anointed you. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Do not look at what somebody else is, is going through, what somebody else has. It might be a mirage. Your story, God can turn it around. So the manager, took it into her own home. Will you take anybody to your own home? Will you look after somebody in your own house? You look after them? I remember one day here we had a sister. She was going through challenges. It was 2009. She was an illegal immigrant. She was found with a false prophet, a false prophet, a false passport. She came to live with us. You know, they looked around for where she could stay. The people at their own church would not take it. But thank God. God has given me a wife that can give glory to God. And she came, my wife says, no, we'll keep it. We'll stay with it. She came to stay with us. We started praying for it. She was meant to be deported. Things were bad. Glory to God. Things were not going. There's nothing glory to God about that. Things were not going well in her life. She was about to be deported. They had caught her with a false passport. That was during the days when we were just praising God, speaking in tongues. Ah, ah, it was during the year where I learned how to, to sing in the Holy Ghost, glory to God. So every time when I'm coming, I'm speaking in tongues, she will be rejoicing. Ah, you are here, you are speaking in tongues. She said, we stayed with them. As the time was, we stayed with them in that time. Glory to God. God was doing something in her life. The, the case went into the court. She was dismissed. This woman had not been married. All her life, she's been sickly. She has seen her siblings get married. Her mother had forsaken her. Her mother had left her with a stepmother. Things were bad in her life, right? Then one day, my wife asked her, do you really want to be married? She was over uh, nearly in her 50s by then. You know, she, she was thinking, oh, could, could, could I really get married? Oh, you know, because she was coming from a religious environment. Says, Is either you want it or you don't. 
they prayed. I didn't have the faith. <laughs> my wife had the faith. When I, they prayed. Three years after that, never deported. Got married to a wonderful, wonderful husband. Now they've been married for over nearly, I think this is eight years. But watch this. We kept him. We looked after him. We fed him. When she was going through challenges, when she was going through trials, we could have said we don't have room. It is enough. You know, we, we can't look after you this long enough. But you see, God knew where to bless this woman. We were fighting for her family. We were fighting for her marriage. She came when she did not have papers. She came when she was going through challenges, but she left with her husband. Glory to God. What am I talking about? Fighting for the family is huge. It requires you. It requires you to be sent to people that are vulnerable. It requires you to be sent to people that are hating, that you can hear the cry. You can be caught up with the heartbeat of God, that Father. I hear your heartbeat towards people that are lost. It's not about me. It's not about what I want, but it is about you. It is about you. The manager looked after this woman, looked after after he gave her the job, mentored him, mentored her, he told her how much she loved him. And this woman started believing in herself. Glory to God. She had an encounter with Jesus. Her life was changed. Guess what? The grandmother who looked after her, she's the one who had deposited the seed. This is a woman who wanted to hang herself, wanted to kill herself. But the manager who had God, in the prayers of a grandmother who had long gone, long gone to heaven, glory to God, when her own family had forsaken her, rejected her, the prayers of the grandmother still kept her fighting for the family. See, your prayers might keep somebody, might keep your grandkids. So never neglect even that time of fellowship. That vibrant time of fellowship. We are fellowshiping again. We are praying again. We are doing this again. You don't know. What those prayers might do to your great grandson. You don't know what you are doing. Glory to God. It, you will begin to bring to bring your, 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 your children into alignment. Into alignment. Say alignment. Alignment with the people that are sent to them. All you need is somebody that is sent. Glory to God. That manager was sent. She, she was sent because of a praying grandmother. That woman who came into our house so that we can look after it. She is a giver. In a church, you could not go into a house and do not leave without anything. She will go out of her way to do something. So she initiated it. Glory to God. What am I saying? See, sometimes your conduct, what you are doing right now, in what you do for God, will cause God to send people to you that will later on help you when you are going through a terrible trial. And when you encounter those people, glory to God, they will bring a major shift in you and your household. So it's important to sow the right seeds now, glory to God. It's important right now where you are, things might be going well, they might be good. When you say fighting for the fighting for the family, it sounds to me, fight, why do we have to fight? <laughs> this might be good, but in this life, this life, this life, there is tribulation. That's what Jesus said. There is tribulation. So you need to continue sowing the right seeds. As you do so, God sends somebody over you. Watch this. That woman, after being mentored, she got married <laughs> to, God, to a husband who had never been married before. She had three children in Zimbabwe. Glory. All her children came to England and watch this now. She's the woman who wanted to kill herself. Now God calls her into ministry that I have called you to help vulnerable children. Glory to God. And this woman, God begins to paint pictures of what she called her to do. Now she's a world changer. She, her idea was to go to Bulawayo and help people that are vulnerable in Bulawayo. And the call came to go to Malawi. In Malawi, when she entered Malawi, she saw these young girls nine, 10 years of age, being sent to a man they called Kaika. The man could abuse them sexually. She started crying, you know, she started crying because now she has a heart for the lost. She has a heart of the father. She knew what it meant to be rejected. Now she is seeing little children that are sent to a man called Tiger. Now Tiger is doing whatever he wanted to do to little children, abusing little children. But now she is sent to them. Can you be sent? Can you 
allow your pain to propel you to your destiny. Yes, they have beat you up. Yes, they put you in a prison. Yes, the husband has left you. Yes, it is hard. Yes, it is painful. Can you not allow your pain to be used by God to further the gospel, to help those that are lost? See, it is because of Jesus who was willing to be sent, to die at the cross, glory to God, to bring about a change, to bring about a transformation. See, can you be sent? Can you allow God to, to use you, to send you? Can you pray for the habit? Can you start praying dangerous prayers? That Father, it's not about me anymore. It's about you. Lord, I want to hear your cry. See, Jesus did not come to this world to establish an earthly physical kingdom. He came to die. He is coming back to establish a physical kingdom. But when he came, he came to die. His invitation to his followers, well, unless, you, unless you are willing to lose your life, you have no part in me. Right? Says so the one that has to follow me has to deny himself. Now, this woman, after she got married, she could have said, now I can live in prosperity. She could have gone around. She could have gone back to those that rejected. You see me now. Hey, <laughs> you rejected me. Now I found a husband. You see what is happening? No. Lord, send me. She ended up going to Malawi in a God-ordained project that God had sent him. See, a person that is sent is dangerous. Be the person that is sent. You say, don't send yourself now. Because sometimes in ministry, in the things of God, we send ourselves. You know, I would like to go there. You know, when I got born again, oh man, I'm telling you, I had a lot of things I wanted to do. I would like to do this. I would like to do that. I would like to preach like T.D. Jackson when I see T.D. Jackson on television. You know, I'll be mini T.D. Jackson. Then I fell in love with Andrew Womack. I started sitting down and being cool and calm like Andrew Womack. And then I saw another preacher. You know, I, I was all over the place. All over the place. Until the Lord showed me in 2009. Give me an article that I wrote, that I subscribed to, follow the leader. It was about Jesus, follow me. I had to again come to the end of myself. Lord, where have you sent me? Where? Because as you follow Jesus, Jesus begins to send you. You no longer send yourself. You, 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 you become the person who says, Lord, when you have been sent, I'm an unprofitable servant. I only did what you asked me to do, then it's no longer about you. Now it's about Jesus. It's about Jesus being lifted up. Think of it. In our contemporary churches, Paul and Silas in prison, in prison, in prison, in prison. Hey, where is their God? Where is God now that they are in prison? Where is God now that my marriage is falling apart? Where is God now that my children are on track? Where God can still be there in that place of crushing, Glory to God, because something else is about to come out. I was listening today, listening to, 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 to T.D. Jacks, you know, something that I've not really, I'd listened to it before. You see, my son sent it to me, so I thought, no, let me listen to this today and here. You know, it's my free day today. After all, let me listen and sit down and listen. See, I, I heard things. I'd listened to the message before, but I had not listened to it. Today, when I was listening to it, you see, I started hearing him. He, he, he started talking about that place well, you see, he said he was born in between, in between two babies that died. His uh, one after him died, the one before him died. So he was born in between. You see, sometimes we see people in that prominent place, in that prominent position. We see them leading a mega church. We see them doing phenomenal, phenomenal things at the top, but we do not know for them to be at the top why God has sent them, what they've gone through, their foundation. They had to go deeper down. They did not give up. He was saying that he was about to give up because of what the media was saying about him, that the media was writing bad press about him when he was young. They were writing papers when he had started his ministry. You know, his daughter had gotten pregnant. Things were bad. Now, he was sharing about his experience. He was sharing about his pain. Most of us, because we don't understand pain, we do not understand the crushing process. We start even wondering, how can it be special for 30,000 people when his daughter at 13 is pregnant? How can a woman be doing this when his own son nearly committed suicide? When his own son died because of drugs, how can we? So when we see people at the top there, we can start converting what is at the top, but we don't realize 
they are crushing. We don't realize they are paying for them to be sent to be at the top. We think it was just an easy ride. There is no easy ride in life. If you are to be effective in life, sometimes you have a suicide note. Things might be bad in your marriage. Things might be bad. Sometimes the husband will leave you. You see, sometimes the wife might leave you. You love God. You are praying. You are seeking God. Because the church, what the church is presenting right now, it has nothing to do with what life can be. You see, what the church is presenting is you, you will come out of this. You are coming out of that. Sometimes you need to go through stuff Glory to God. And that stuff that you go through as you walk through the valley of shadow of death, it is a valley you have to go through it. It is a valley. It is a trying moment. It is a bad moment. Because as you go through that place, you then when you get on the other side, you have a message. How many people don't have messages? Because they've not gone through anything. Glory to God. See, when you go through stuff, Glory to God. Don't allow stuff to kill you. Don't allow the valley to kill you. No. On the other side, you become the saint one. <laughs> on the other side, you can win somebody else fame. Don't allow the prison to imprison you. To be in prison like Paul and Silas is to allow, it is to allow, is to allow your environment to keep you in a place of confinement that you no longer become effective. It is to allow your background that you don't understand what I've gone through. You don't understand the pain I have gone through. So how can I be saying God is looking for hating people that have gone through stuff because he understands that when they are on the other side, they will be humble enough. Lord, if it was not by you on my side, I could not be here. If it was not you on my side, Lord, I could have been swallowed up. But I know that you were with me. You were on my side. You caused me to soar despite how bad this situation was. You caused me to go through this valley of shadow of death. Now I come out on the other side. The woman came out on the other side. She came out with a testimony that changed people's lives. See, as I was listening, listening to teach and said he was about to quit. He was preaching at this church, you know, contemplating preaching, contemplating quitting. Then this woman who had a stillborn in a fallopian tube, you see, and when you have a stillborn in your fallopian tube, everything, the sepsis, everything, she was on death's bed. She was dying. And she was listening to T.D. Jacks on television, being blessed. She was at this church that T.D. Jacks was preaching. And she said, wait, I want to see T.D. Jacks. And T.D. Jacks didn't even want to see her because he was going through his own inner turmoil. He was preaching, but going through in his own inner turmoil. Sometimes when you are saying, doesn't mean that you are not going through stuff. Don't be fooled to think that <laughs> because somebody is a minister, <laughs> glory to God, they're not going through anything. Don't be fooled. Don't, don't be fooled to think that you have to, everything has to be okay for God to send you. No, sometimes you are in prison, you are sent. Sometimes things are bad in your finances, but God has sent you. Sometimes things are bad in your marriage, but God has sent you. There are many people that disqualify themselves. Was everything okay for that manager? Probably not. No, but she was willing to accommodate somebody who was going through struggles. Don't be fooled to think that everything has to be perfect. See, we, we hold ourselves at this paid degree, which is really not biblical, not biblical at all. You see, that everything has to be okay for me to be sent. You know, I have to have a certain amount of money. Things have to happen. You know, I told God that I'm not going to preach until my father is saved. I, that's what I said. Then I realized how stupid I was. Glory to God. I said, so I'm going to disqualify myself. It was as if I was saying, God, you are the one that has to save my father. Unless you say, God has done everything about saving my father. He died 2,000 years ago. It's his choice. My responsibility is to pray and pray for the right people in his path for him to be saved. It's got nothing to do with God. See, sometimes we have this mindset as Christians that, no, I have to be straight. I have to be holy. I have to be righteous. You will never be holy enough to be saved. It's the march of the unqualified, the army of the unqualified. We are God's army. It is him that qualifies us despite our pain, despite our struggles. You see, T.D. Jess was going through his pain, going through his struggles. This woman who had gone through struggles had a message in a hospital bed. She was dying in a hospital bed. Says, I want to see T.D. Jess. She waited long enough. Jess was also waiting for her to go, but he waited long enough. As T.D. Jess was coming down these stairs, he says, listen, I was about to die. Your messages 
they kept me alive. Every time I could hear you, you know, my spirit was rejuvenated. Why? Because he was sent to him. He was sent to him. He started crying because that was the evening he was contemplating quitting ministry. Things were bad. People were saying bad stuff about him. He says, Lord, you know, I don't need this. But this woman was now sent to TDJX. Today we have a TDJX. Why? Because of a woman that was also sent to TDJX. In the TDJX, that was ministering to a woman. When you are sent, sometimes you are not sent to the multitude. Sometimes you are not sent to the people. So you start looking at the people as if they are your source. You start looking, and then you pour yourself in people that will later on say, crucify him, glory to God. You see, yet the person that you are sent to, somebody who is in a hospital who is dying out there, so when we are talking about being sent, it's about being available to God, putting on the mind of God, allowing God to lead us and direct us. Jax changed the story of that woman. And that woman's story also changed to the Jax story. Can you be sent? Can you be sent to anybody? See, in closing, there was a gentleman that I met. You see, I'm always attracted to people that are humble. You know, there's something about people that are humble. It attracts me to them. I just want to do something. You see, the reason why I want to do something because I know there is a spiritual law. The Bible says God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So I want to be the grace of God to the humble. Now, this gentleman was struggling. He was struggling with his fees. Struggling with his fees. Now, I had heard, you know, it's amazing. God always calls somebody to hear. I had heard, I don't even know who I heard from. I had quit college. He was studying to be a minister in the university I went to. He was doing a theological degree. So it is a very expensive university. I had heard from somebody, from some source, <laughs> that they had stopped him because he could not pay his fees. And I thought to myself, it moved me. I said, look, how can it? this man is humble? What can I do? Then I met one of the sisters that used to attend the church where this gentleman attended. I said, how can you, this person is educating himself, paying from his own pocket so that he can preach the gospel to you. How can you allow him to be sent off college? You now they have laid him, they've gotten him out of college because he can't pay fees. And you all, they go there and sit, you receive. That sister received the instruction. She took those instructions. She became sent to him. Hallelujah. She mobilized other people in the church. They paid the fees for him. He finished his education. What do you think is happening to that sister right now? What do you think is happening to her children? What do you think is happening to her family? Her family are coming to the Lord. Why? Watch this. I was sent. Somebody was sent for me to hear. I was sent to somebody else. And that somebody else spoke the message to others. And they mobilized each other. And they paid for it. He doesn't even know what happened up to probably now. Glory to God. What am I saying? Being sent is a huge thing. It's about hearing the voice of the Spirit. Hallelujah. And acting out what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. As you do so, you bring a change to a multitude of people. You release the burdens in faith. You and your household shall be saved. See the opportunity to sow the right seed. Be the saint one. Receive those that are saved. Right? You receive it this wonderful evening? I pray that you do. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, if ever there is anything that we have learned today is to have the heartbeat of God, the heartbeat of the Father, to see those that are hurting in our communities that God can send us to them. Father, we pray that we don't get busy with what we want, but we get busy with what you have called us to do as your children. Yes, Lord, to get busy with what you have called us to do. You sent Jesus to the world to save the world. Now Jesus is in us. He lives in us. We pray, Father God, that even in ministry, we don't get caught up with all the religious junk, the religious work, but we get caught up with you. We get caught up with you. Lord, help us to be the channel that you have called us to be to those that are lost, those that are hating our neighbors, Lord. That brother at the church there who is going through challenges, yet we are busy speaking tongues, sow a seed, do this. That Lord, we be the ones that will sow a seed in his life. We be the ones that will speak life to him. Lord, I pray, Father God, for that sister that is going through challenges, that we will come out of this religious mask, that we will unmask ourselves 
and allow the Holy Spirit to begin to work in us. That we come out of the religious language, Lord, it's time to pray. No, Lord. That we say, Father, help us to pray as the Holy Spirit gives us utterance. That our prayers will be prayers that will penetrate heaven and penetrate the hearts of men and women in this world. We thank you for who you are. You are a good, good God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Lord, I worship you this wonderful, wonderful evening. I thank you, Father God, that you have equipped me to preach the gospel. You have equipped me to raise warriors. I pray, Father God, that, Lord, as I release this word, it will continue to grow in the hearts of your children, that they will arise and become that mighty army that you have called them to be. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord strengthen you. See, that's why the enemy has been working mightily to try and stop this recording because he knew that God was doing something awesome, something mighty. I'm your host, Pastor Love. If you have come and joined us for the first time, you know that we love you. We appreciate you. If you have any testimony concerning this series of this month, and you want to share, you know, we've been encouraging people to share. If you want to share your testimony, please do send us a, a text. Just let us know. We will give you the opportunity to share. Your testimony might actually be sent to others that will that are going through your challenges, and then your testimony will bring them up as well. In Jesus' mighty name, you are blessed. Have a wonderful, pleasant night. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Glory to God.